chapter 2. You guys all find it in your book? Finding. All right, scatter plots with linear trends. Scatter plots. They use bivariate data, and you're like, what does that mean? Well, that means you have two quantities. Yeah, you usually have an X value and a Y value that you can plot. Okay? Scatter plots just look like a whole bunch of dots, on a, and hopefully you can see some sort of pattern if you do it correctly. If your data doesn't show dots, that's okay. So, scatter plot shows variables along a horizontal. That's the X axis, that's the explanatory or sometimes you might call it independent. Variable along the vertical is called the response, sometimes called the dependent. Okay? Um, so if you create a scatter plot with association between high school GPA and college GPA, or high school GPA will be explanatory, college will be the response. So you could do that. So, so Kind of a goofy one. Let's say we're studying whether the amount of crime that occurs is related to unemployment rate at the time. So both are quantitative variables, so scatter plot is appropriate. On uh, the next page, group scatter plots. All right. Moving over to the page with a whole bunch of dotty dot dots. All right. So if your scatter plots look like one and five. Basically, it looks like you grabbed a fistful of mud and you threw it against the wall. There's really no correlation to it. You have positive correlation if it appears the slope be positive. You have negative correlation if this slope appears to be negative. So if you're rising as you go to the right, it's positive. If you're falling as you go to the right, it's negative. The closer your R value is, so we're going to start talking about the correlation and we will be using the R value. This is for correlation. Okay. So basically, correlation R is from negative 1 to 0 to 1. Okay. So if this is negative, this means I would have a negative slope. If it was positive, it would be a positive slope. So the closer you are to positive one or negative one means that your correlation between the two things you're comparing is very close to a straight line. Think of correlation values, and the nice thing is Desmos does correlation for us. If you use the graphing calculator, you would have to turn your diagnostics on, go through that whole thing, and do it over and over. Desmos does it automatically. Okay. So, um, so if you had the one and five, which are just like kind of all over the place dots, this has a very low correlation. It's very close to zero. And then if you look at two versus six, one of them kind of does this, kind of all over the place, and one of them does this. So this would be like you would call a weak positive. And this would be a weak negative. And then as closer and closer you get there, this could be you know, moderate to strong. This is obviously strong, positive, negative. So the closer your dots look to resemble a line, the better your data. If your stuff doesn't make a straight line, it doesn't mean you did something incorrectly. Okay? It just means that they might not be, they might not correlate. And that's statistically significant to say that. You know, that's where we start getting statistics. We could say this or that does or does not line up. Okay, you might have thought something did, and then you go and you, you know, collect data and go through it and say, yeah, it did or didn't. Okay, so we talked about the first paragraph. Okay, positive association, negative association. We talked about positive association means my slope of my straight line would be positive. Slope of my straight line would be negative. Things like that. And again, Desmos does it all for you. And it does it all on the same, same graph, which is great. All right. So, anything? Nothing amazing there. All right. Flip the page.
All right. So, so just beware. Scatter plots collected from data can look like just about anything you dream up. So if you look at the following scatter plot where you have a huge bunch as you go to the top right and it's not quite as scattered at the bottom, there might be ways that we might want to analyze that data. Okay? There are ways that you can kind of cheat the system, but you can't cheat the equation. You could change your scaling in the x and y direction to make it appear to be more of a straight line. Uh, but once you do your line of best fit and it gives you the R value, the R value is going to verify whether it was good or bad to deal with. Um, so, let's see. Scatter plots, curve and shape requires a whole different thing of techniques. So, I want to run through on Desmos. Okay, my friends, I'm going to ask you personal question, actually two personal questions. Can you handle it? Sure. Well, let me tell you what the first two questions are. You tell me if you could handle it or not. Okay? I'm going to ask for your social security. I'm kidding. And your grandmother's maiden name. All right, so let's jump on to Desmos. Wait, what are the two names? That's one of the things that, that you know that you might know so you can oh, as a security measure. No? Has been a now they just send you a text to your phone and then you type in the big old number. All right. So I'm gonna go use a table. Still with me? Okay. So I am sixty nine inches tall and my shoe size is nine. Okay? All right. Do you know how many inches tall you are? No. Do you know what your shoe size your shoe size shoe size would be? Actually, wait, I might, I might know both. Okay. I know how tall I am. So start off our side. Height in inches. How tall are you? Five seven, you're sixty seven inches. Shoe size? Ten point five. I was 69 and 9, size 9. All right, go ahead, Claire. So that's uh, 60, 64. And your shoe size? 7.5. Okay, go ahead. And? And 7, okay. Go ahead. 65 and 7.5 and uh huh 13 okay notice I'm plugging both in x and y so up till now we were just plugging into x right all right front row 63 and 7.5 Wait, it's not going to matter. It'll work out. Go ahead. Ten. Go ahead. Give him a nudge. Height and shoe size. Uh, shoe size Six two. Yeah, inches. 74. And what was your shoe size? 12. Back row? 10.5. Go ahead. 72 and 11. Comfy chairs. 72 and 11. Go ahead. 69 and 10. And 77 and 14. Front row. Okay. 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 Shoe size? Eight. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ye. Height and inches. Oops. And shoe size? Table. I will start. I am 60, no, 73 inches. And, uh, and Connor is the exact same. Connor again. Uncle Matty. Which one is 8 foot 4? <laughs> um, I am I am sixty seven and size nine. Okay. Sixty three and what? Seven point five. And and seven and a half. Okay. Did I get everybody? If I skipped you, I'm sorry. All right. So nice thing with this, you go in. Hit the little plus sign on Desmos. And does that, here, let's make it a little darker. What do you think? That looks like a positive. Well, it would be positive because it, it's rising as we go to the right. The taller you are, the bigger your shoe size. Okay. Okay. So I'd say moderate. So it's, it's I mean, it looks fairly good. I imagine if we were to go and collect like the 4,000 plus people on this campus, get all their data, we would have a pretty good positive correlation, would you think? Yeah. All right. So, again, Desmos does this for you. So, things I want you to recognize. Up here, I have X1 and Y1. Do you agree? X1, Y1, agree? All right. So, if you're going to make your equation on Desmos, you go Y1. Still follow me? You see where I got Y1 from? Did you type it in? I did. And then you're going to use the little tilde, that little curvy thing. You're not going to use an equal sign. It's called tilde. Okay, on the keyboard, it's uh, next to the 1, the shift next to the 1. And I want M. M is a slope, right? And then I want X1, which is the other piece of data, and then Y equals MX plus B. So we're using tilde. We're not using the equal sign. If you use the equal sign, it's not going to give you. Now, this is the kind of the neat thing about Desmos. Everything's right there for you. As long as you recall, anytime you're making an equation off of two, an X and a Y thing, whatever your table, your X, Y was, that's where your X, one, Y, one comes from. It understands slope as an operator. It understands B as an operator. So my slope is 0.44, OK? So remember, slope is the change in the vertical direction over the change in the horizontal. So for every 0.44 size, 0.44 shoe you have, make shoe means you're one inch taller. Okay, because we did on the X, we did the height, on the Y, we did the <coughs> shoe size. So for every 0.44 bigger your shoe size is, that gives you one extra inch. Your y-intercept is negative 21, which doesn't really mean much in the context of this. That would mean if you're zero, zero inches tall, you have a shoe size that's negative 21. That doesn't really make sense. But a lot of times, uh, data gathering doesn't make con the context of the x and the y-intercept don't always make sense, and that's okay. Um, Notice below it says we have an R squared value, which is 0.7965. Okay, when you deal with straight lines, which this is, you don't use the R squared value, you always use the R value. The only difference between R squared and R, R squared is R times R. So if I went 0 0.8925 times 0.8925, you'd get 0.7965 roughly. Okay. Yes, it only carries out four decimal places, but that's enough. Okay, so we're looking at the R value, which is 0 0.8925. So that basically means that our data fits a line of best fit, that particular line that it drew for you, with like an 89.25% certainty. Okay, 89.25 a good test grade? Sure, I'd take it. 
So kind of look at your R value as a test rate. If it's something you'd be happy with a test rate, do it. Nice thing with Desmos, it plots the line of best fit with you. Um, we will talk about residuals a little bit. I'll show you how the residuals work. So if I hit plot the residuals, notice you get these red dots down below. So the residual is this, ready? Take this first dot, you see this dot is, is above the line that much? That means that's the distance above it. So if it's above the x-axis, it means your actual data point would have fallen above your line of best fit. If it falls right on the x-axis, that means our data point was exact. If it falls below the x-axis, that means that it was underneath our line of best fit. That's what the residual is. We tried teaching that in Algebra 1 many years ago, and it was just like, why? But, and you might be still there, but the residual basically just shows you this. The residual, the nice thing about the residual, and this is a further lesson, if you take a look at the residual and the residual doesn't seem to have any type of pattern to it, that means that your data that you're comparing is good. So this is another way of doing data comparison. If you had like, if you had like a parabola shape down here, like you had a whole bunch over here, a bunch in the middle down below, and a bunch on, on the right, that, that starts adding questions to your thing. So the residual becomes something important. No, I'm not going to ask you to find the residual um, as of today. So, questions about this. Again, Desmos, powerful operating tool. Are you going to make mistakes on Desmos? Sure. You're going to type in y equals mx, please. Sure, you go, Mr. Sherp, why is it not showing up? Like, well, make sure it's x1, y1. Make sure your equal sign is a little tilde. But Desmos will do it all for you. So, what I'd like you to work on for a different day. <laughs> is take a look at that 2.1. This will work very well. Hey guys, if it ever says do something by hand, that basically means you're using desk bones and then you plagiarize some desk bones to put it on your paper. <laughs> Deal? Okay? So <laughs> Try that. Try that 2-1. See how you do with it. And that's all I have for you today. Hey, does anybody need... Stop. Save.